along with me for some extra practice. So you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen. I'm going to use a ballpoint pen for this example because this is probably most likely what you have available in your home. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a square. This will be the boundary of my zentangle. And after that, I'm going to divide my square into four equal parts. Well, they don't have to be equal parts, but four parts that are um, not too small. So you don't want to have any teeny tiny sections, but four parts of the square that you'll be able to draw comfortably in. And I'm just sort of going over my boundary line to make it a little bit more thick of a line. And um, when you make your divisions of your square, you don't have to divide it into even squares. You don't have to divide it into triangles. It can be some random wavy lines that go across the paper. Because in a regular zentangle drawing, you might not always have a perfect square to draw in. In the example that I had in the last video where I was showing you how you can create your own Zentangle patterns, I was drawing in a perfect square format. However, in real life you might not have a perfect square to work in. And sometimes students, when they're learning how to draw Zentangles, they don't draw their Zentangles all the way to the edge of the space they're drawing in. So that is part of what we're going to practice right now. So I'm going to demonstrate four Zentangle patterns. I'm choosing patterns that are um, not too easy, but something that's a beginner style of a Zentangle. And um, I'm just looking for, in your drawing, I'm looking for patience in drawing the line, looking to make sure students aren't rushing through so I'm um, drawing slowly. And then I'm also looking for skills that you're learning along the way. So following along would be one skill, making sure that you have the, the patience to uh, notice what step we are working on. And if you need to pause the video, you can do that. You can pause and rewind these videos um, to make sure that you're drawing correctly. And then I'm also looking for drawing skills such as uh, holding the pen properly, uh, drawing slowly, and uh, following along with what I'm doing. So I'm just going to get started. Uh, one of the patterns that I chose is this one called Waves. So to start, um, look at the uh, top right Whatever one is the most simple looking. So I'm going to cover up a couple of these other ones with sticky notes so that they're not distracting us. You will be looking at some of your own Zentangle patterns later. Some that you'll be drawing on your own. I mean, not, not, uh, not me showing you how to do everything, but um, this is sort of also an introduction on how to read these patterns. How to read these instructions. So the first one is to make a couple of noodly shapes and I just want to fill up this top part here. So at least two noodly shapes. I think I'll have another one over here. All right, so now um, I finished with step two. Step three is to add curved lines that are going up. Going from one noodle shape to the other noodle shape. And then when I get to the edge of the boundary that I made, I'm, I'm going to continue the line to it. So even though this doesn't continue and it gets cut off, I'm going to 
take this all the way to the top of the paper to make it look complete. Okay, so I'm finished with that step. The next step, it looks like they added lines, curved lines going the opposite way, going down on both sides of it. So I went up here, I need to go down on this side. I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to connect it to this noodle, so I'm going to have to stop where the boundary is. I also noticed that on this pattern it looks like this line kind of continues across the noodle shapes. It looks like the noodle shape is laid on top of these curved lines and that these would be a continuous wave line. So I'm kind of going to copy that here. So this would be a continuous line. It's okay if it's not perfect. I'm not expecting any of these to be perfect. Okay. So continuous. So I'm sort of going over again the line I made, figuring out where it would go over here. And then this space would have the line going over. My next step would be to add some shading. I could fill in these spaces with my pen and color in some of these spaces black. I don't see any shading or filling in here, so I'm going to have to kind of invent how I want this to look. And since these curved shapes remind me of a project that, uh, that we've done before, I'm going to kind of copy that idea. I've just finished using a pencil to add shadows to the edges of this curvy shape. Does this remind you of the drawing that we made in third grade? That's what I thought about when I saw these curved lines. So I um, added only shadows to this one uh, section of this pattern because I wanted you to be able to see how much more interesting this shaded in piece is versus these other ones. Just to give you um, some idea of how shadows make this a lot more interesting and the contrast between shadow versus no shadow. So on the next section that I'm going to work with, I'm going to do a different kind of pattern and I'm going to fill, it, fill up this whole space. So I'm going to find a pattern that I won't find boring. I don't want to find a boring pattern to fill up my biggest section. So I'm going to use this pattern called Cadent. Plus, I think that this one won't take too much time either. So um, think about the space that you're filling up and how much time you want to spend on it. So I'm going to start again with my pen. I'm going to cover up this other pattern so we're not getting distracted by it on the screen. So the first step is to draw circles. And it's not random circles. These circles are organized in lines. So rows and columns. So I'm going to find the longest path, add those circles in there. I'm trying to space them out evenly, make them all about the same size. And then I'm going to draw rows and columns. And at this point, 
Um, I've kind of run out of room down here. I'd have to imagine that this would continue across, but we can't see it. So I'm going to move up. All right, step two. There's a lot going on here, so you'll need to kind of focus if your pattern has a little bit too much information. Just maybe look at one small piece of it. So it looks like they have a curved line like an S going from the left side of the circle going to the right side of the circle below it. So that's going to look like this. So do you see how that looks like an S? So I'm going to do that on every single circle here. So I don't have another circle to connect to. I'm going to have to. So I don't have another circle to connect to. I'm going to have to just stop my line where the edge of the pattern is. And then at the top, I'm going to kind of make the opposite motion, going from the right side of the circle just up as far as I can. Step three. This looks way more complicated now, but if you just pay attention to the red line, it's making a curved line going from the bottom of the circle on the left to the top of the circle on the right. So that looks like, I'll draw it on this one, that looks like going from the bottom on the left to the top on the right. So this is where that focus and zen comes in because you're Focusing on what the next instruction is when there's no words, you kind of have to look at the symbols and figure out what's different from one to the next. And you also have to focus so that you're doing the same thing repeated without getting bored and making a mistake. So it requires some Zen style focus. a good activity if you need something to help you calm down or something to help you rest your mind. Um, it might also be something to help you rest your eyes after a whole school day of looking at a computer screen. And the last step is to use your pen to add the contrast. Contrast means dark against light. You're uh, filling in all the circles. So you can use your pen for this or if you have a marker that might be a better tool.